In today's lecture, I'm going to take you through the incident module in ServiceNow. By the end of this lecture, you'll understand what an incident is, all of the fields on the incident form and what they mean, and how to create an incident. Before we go into ServiceNow, I'm going to explain what an incident is so you have a solid understanding before we dive into the system. So what is an incident? An incident is an unplanned disruption to an IT service that interferes with the business operations of an organization. An example of an incident within a company could be an end user's laptop is broken, the Wi-Fi within an office is down, or an office printer is broken. These are all good examples of typical incidents that users will experience in and around the workplace. Incidents can cause businesses major losses, not only financially, but also from a productivity standpoint. Having a robust incident management process in place is paramount to ensure that organizations can resume operations with little to no downtime. So what is incident management? Incident management is the process that guides organizations on how to handle the life cycle of an incident effectively ensuring that they are resolved as quickly as possible with little to no disruption to the business operations of an organization. The goal of incident management is to ensure that the service quality and availability of all IT services is maintained at the best possible service level. Now that we've covered what incident management is and what an incident is, let's go into ServiceNow and create one. For today's demo, we're going to create an incident for the Wi-Fi being down in an office. Please note, in order to create an incident in ServiceNow, you'll need the admin, sn underscore incident underscore write, or itil role associated to your user account. The first thing you'll want to do is open up ServiceNow, go into the application navigator, and type in incident. Under the incident application, Click on the Create New module. A blank incident form will now load. As we create this incident, I'm going to explain what each field means at the same time so you have a solid understanding of all the different attributes. At the top of the form, we have a number field. This field displays the unique system generated number for this incident record. If you are wanting to locate this record in the future, keep note of this number as it can be used as a unique identifier. In the next field, caller, this is the end user who is affected by the incident. For this example, I'm going to enter a bell tutor. This would typically be the user who is calling in or reporting the issue. Next, we have the category field. This field allows you to define the type of incident that is being logged. Categories are extremely useful for ensuring incidents get rooted and assigned to the correct team when working on an incident. For this example, I'm going to select Network, since the Wi-Fi issue is related to the network. In the next field, Subcategory, this field allows you to define a specific subcategory for the category selected in the previous field. For this example, I'm going to select Wireless, since this subcategory best categorizes the Wi-Fi issue that we're facing. Next, we have the service field. This field is used to capture the business service that is affected by this particular incident. In today's example, I'm going to select IT services, since this is the business service that is being affected by the Wi-Fi that is currently down. You'll notice that when I select this business service, two icons appear next to the field. The first icon allows you to view the business service in a dependency view, displaying upstream and downstream dependencies. This visualization allows you to view all of the business services that may or may not be affected by this incident. The second icon then allows you to preview key fields on the service record. This is ideal if you want to quickly see what the service is without navigating to its form. In the next field, Service Offering, this field allows you to select the offering that is affected by this incident. For IT services, there are no offerings available, but if there were, you'd be able to select them here. Next, we have the Configuration Item field. Here you can select the configuration item that is being affected by this incident. In this example, 
the wireless access point is not in the system, but if it were, I'd be able to select it and we'd also be able to view all upstream and downstream dependencies for the wireless access point. Having this information allows you to understand what other configuration items will most likely be affected by this incident. In the next field, short description, this field is used to describe the incident at hand. For this example, I'm going to enter, the wireless access point is not working in building 2. You'll notice that when I entered the description and clicked out of the field, a list of possibly related knowledge articles displayed. These knowledge articles are displayed to try and help resolve this incident you are working on. In ServiceNow, this type of search is called contextual search. You can view any of these knowledge articles simply by clicking on the article's title and the article will display in a modal. If a knowledge article helped you with the incident you are working on, you can click on the This Helped button at the top right of the modal and this will indicate that the knowledge article helped you with the incident. In this particular example, there are no knowledge articles relating to the Wi-Fi issue that we're facing. Next, we have the Description field. This field allows you to describe the exact details of the incident. In this example, I'm going to enter. It's been reported that the Wi-Fi in Building 2 is currently down and users cannot access the internet wirelessly. In the next field, Contact Type, this field enables you to define how the end user contacted you in regards to this incident. As you can see, this field has various contact options. In this particular example, I'm going to select Phone for demo purposes. This field is used to allow service desk analysts and managers to understand how incidents are being reported. Next, we have the state field. This field allows you to select the state in which the incident is in. By default, all incidents start off in the new status. As you can see, an incident can progress to states such as in progress, on hold, resolved, closed, and cancelled. Once you've created an incident, you can transition an incident into several of these states. In the next field, impact. Here you can select the impact in which this incident has on the business. By default, the impact is set as low, but you can change it to medium or high. For today's example, I'm going to leave it as low. Next, we have the urgency field. This field allows you to define how urgent this incident is. In this example, the Wi-Fi being down is not a major issue, since it's only affecting a few users and they can use an Ethernet cable to access the network and internet for the time being. So I'll leave this field as low. You'll notice that the next field, Priority, is read-only and is automatically populated. The value generated and displayed in this field is calculated by the impact and urgency selected. As you can see on the screen, this priority matrix demonstrates how the priority of an incident is calculated. In the next field, Assignment Group, here you can select what group will be assigned to work on this incident. In today's example, I'm going to select Network, since this group deals with wireless issues. And finally, we have Assigned To. In this field, you can select the individual who will work on the incident to resolve it. For the demo, I'm going to select David Dan, as I know he's our in-house wireless expert and is currently available. Before we go any further with this incident, right-click on the form header of this incident and click Save to save it. Now that we've completed filling in the main fields on this form, let's head down to the bottom of the incident form to check out the Notes, Related Records and Resolution Information tabs. In the first tab, Notes, we have a Watch List field. This field allows you to add yourself or others to this incident for the purpose of receiving notifications when comments are added to this incident. For this example, I'm going to add myself. Next, we have the Work Notes List field. This field is similar to the Watch List field, but with this one, users are able to receive notifications when work notes are added to this incident. For demo purposes, I'm going to add myself. In the Work Notes field, this field allows you to provide an update relating to the progress or resolution of this particular incident. In this example, I'm going to enter, 
David resolved the Wi-Fi access issue by resetting the wireless access point. Please note, this field is used for providing internal updates to members of the team working on this incident, and not the end user. This field is typically used to document technical information. To provide an update with the end user, simply click on the additional comments, customer visible checkbox, and enter an update. In this example, I'm going to type, the technician resolved the issue with the wireless access point, and the Wi-Fi is now up and running. At this point, the incident is currently resolved, but before we update the incident is resolved, we're going to cover the Related Records and Resolution Information tabs. In the Related Records tab, the first field we have is Parent Incident. This field allows you to select another incident record that you wish to associate this one with for the purpose of grouping several related incidents together that have the same root issue. For this example, I'm going to leave the field blank since there are no other incidents relating to the Wi-Fi being down. Next, we have the Problem field. This field allows you to select a related problem record if one already exists in the system. A problem is basically the underlying cause of one or more incidents. Later on in this course, we'll go into the details of problem management and how to create one. In this instance, there aren't any related problem records in the system for this incident, so we're going to leave this field blank. In the next field, Change Request, this field allows you to select a related change record if one exists. A change request is basically a formal request that is submitted by a member of the organization to make a change to a configuration item. An example of a change could be upgrading the software on a device or upgrading the RAM on a workstation. We'll go into change management and change requests later on in this course, but for this particular field, there are no open chain requests relating to this incident, so I'm going to leave this field blank. And in the final field, caused by change, this field allows you to select a change request that caused this particular incident. This field is great if a change request caused an incident, and you'd like to reference this incident back to the change request for tracking and reporting purposes. An example of an incident caused by a change could be that a change to upgrade a SQL database to a newer version was made, and after the upgrade, several users reported that their access to the database stopped working. These users then reported the issue to the help desk, and incidents were created. This level of tracking is great, as members of the IT organization are able to see all incidents that were caused by a particular change request. For this field, no changes caused this incident that we're aware of so we're going to leave this field blank. In the next tab, Resolution Information, this tab includes several fields relating to the resolution of this incident. In the first field, Knowledge, this field allows you to have the system automatically create a draft knowledge article upon the closure of this incident. The draft knowledge article will contain the information included in this incident. Please note, when a knowledge article is automatically created from an incident, the knowledge article will copy the values from the short description, additional comments, and number fields on the incident form. For this example, I'm going to leave this field unchecked since I don't want to create a knowledge article for this incident. Next, we have the resolution code field. This field allows you to select the method in which the incident was resolved. As you can see, there are various resolution options available. This field is primarily used for reporting purposes, so members of IT management can understand how incidents are being resolved. For demo purposes, I'm going to select Solved Permanently. In the next field, Resolution Notes, this field is used for logging any notes relating to the resolution of this particular incident. For this example, I'm going to enter The Wi-Fi issue was resolved by resetting the wireless access point and this resolved the connectivity issue that the user was facing. Please note, the Resolution Code and Resolution Notes fields are mandatory in order to set an incident to the resolved state. In the final fields, Resolved By and Resolved, these two fields allow you to specify the individual who resolved the incident, 
and the date and time which it was resolved. For these fields, I'm going to select the system administrator and today's date and time. Now that we've completed filling in this incident, let's resolve it. To resolve an incident, simply click on the Resolve button located on the form header. As you can now see, we have been redirected back to the Incidents list view and we can see the resolved incident that we just completed. Let's go back to the same incident. You can see that the incident is still in the resolved state and not closed. By default, the system will automatically set the incident to the closed state once the incident has been in the resolved state for five days. You also have the option to manually close the incident if you wish. To do this, you can simply click on the Close Incident button on the form header and the incident will be closed. Please note, when an incident is closed, most of the fields on the incident form will be set to Read Only and you won't be able to update them. Before we complete this lecture, I would also like to note that incidents can also be created via the service portal or via email. And that is all for this lecture on incident management.